A very warm welcome to the programme and we begin in Washington where the US House of Representatives has adjourned in disarray after three failed attempts to elect the Republican Kevin McCarthy as Speaker. It's the first time in a century the procedure has failed on a first vote. A small number of hardline Republicans are refusing to support Mr McCarthy and nothing can go ahead in the House until a new Speaker is elected. Our North America correspondent Peter Bowes has the story. The heart of U.S. government deadlocked because its members can't agree on who will be the next speaker. The House of Representatives is meeting for the first time at the start of the new Congress with the Republicans in charge. Pursuant to law and precedent, the next order of business is the election of the Speaker of the House of Representatives for the 118th Congress. With a slim majority, the Republicans have the votes to select the next speaker, but only if most of them agree. Kevin McCarthy is the frontrunner. The Republican leader enjoys wide support and has been campaigning for the role for months. And I think Kevin McCarthy is the right guy to lead us. I really do, or I wouldn't be standing up here giving this speech. I, I came in with Kevin. We came in the same time 16 years ago. We haven't always agreed on everything. But I like his fight, I like his tenacity, and I like the... I remember Kevin told me, I actually wrote about this in a book. I remember Kevin told me, he said, when the, the toughest times in life are when you get knocked down. The question is, can you come back? And I've always seen him be able to do that. The names but this could be a knockdown from which there is no comeback. Mr McCarthy is a polarising figure and not universally popular in his party. And that was obvious when the voting started. Round after round, three times, he failed to win the majority needed to be declared the new speaker. It was down to a small group on the right of the party who voted instead for Jim Jordan, who'd earlier said Kevin McCarthy was the right person for the job. He was opposed by 19 members during the first two rounds and then 20 in the third round. No persons having received a majority of the whole number of votes cast by surname a speaker has not been elected. It leaves the House in disarray, unable to move on with the business of running the country. But differences in political ideology also lie at the centre of this impasse, with disagreement over the future direction of the Republicans. There had been indications that there was going to be this fight going back weeks. Obviously, this is not the way the Republicans in the House wanted to start their uh, majority. But, uh, but there had been these indications, and, and both sides have dug in, and, and there's no uh, indication yet of when this is going to end. So far, Kevin McCarthy has doggedly refused to drop out of the race. It's the first time in 100 years that a speaker has not been elected in the opening round of voting. On that occasion, it took several days. History could be about to repeat itself. Peter Bowes, BBC News. Well, let's discuss this with Republican political consultant Rob Stutzman. Uh, Rob, good to have you on the programme. Extraordinary events going on uh, in the House and, and some would say very embarrassing, isn't it, for the Republican Party? Well, it is embarrassing for the Republican Party. Of course, several things have been embarrassing for the Republican Party now for the past several years. But what we're seeing with Kevin McCarthy and these House Republicans is the culmination of what was a very disappointing election cycle that left McCarthy with a very small margin in order to be elected speaker. And that small margin right now is preventing him from being able to accomplish his his goal. Uh, as we, you know, the, the five that we knew were solidly against him were not a surprise, but that number today when it started at 19 on the first ballot was a surprise and he does have quite a hill to climb. So, so what do you think will happen next then? Because as, as our uh, correspondent Peter Bowes was saying there, Kevin McCarthy at the moment is, is not stepping down. No, Peter's right. He's, he's not stepping down and he'll continue to say that he's not stepping down. It will ultimately, if he doesn't uh, start making progress with the votes that will start to occur again tomorrow in Washington or in your day today, uh, he'll have to eventually probably be tapped on the shoulder by his colleagues if it becomes apparent that he does not have the votes and he's not moving in the right direction. We'll know a lot, I think, when that first vote is cast tomorrow. Right now, there are 20 Republicans voting against him. And not for someone else, just really against him. 
okay, if, if it's against him, who, who is the alternative if, if he does eventually have to sort of stand down? Well, that's the problem. There is no apparent alternative. Mr. Jordan's name appears on the ballot, but that's a pro forma measure. He, he cannot be elected speaker, nor is he seeking it. Uh, he wouldn't get a majority uh, of the of the Republicans. So you have to decide if it's once McCarthy, if it may not be McCarthy, then who's it going to be? And that could take a matter of days, frankly, for that to sort out. The obvious first choice to consider would be Steve Scalise, congressman from Louisiana, number two in the Republican leadership. But it's not clear that the five obstinate, most obstinate Republicans would be willing to vote for him either. And, and just remind our international audience how important this role is, Speaker of the House. Speaker of the House is, is, is very important. Obviously, it's the, it's the gavel for the lower house in, in Congress, very important. Uh, and in our Constitution, second in line uh, to be president. Uh, so if the vice president were unable to take office, if the president was incapacitated, that would fall to the Speaker of the House. So this is a very important position just in our succession of government set forth in our Constitution. OK, Rob Stutzman, thank you for your analysis. We shall keep a close eye tomorrow as to how things uh, pan out. Indeed. Thank you.